Hi everybody, Elisa here with another Vera Bradley bag of the day. Um, today I, I wanted to just quickly show um, a bag that I'm so pleased I found because it was really truly one of my um, biggest Vera unicorns. <laughs> And I was so pleased to finally find it, so I thought I would show it, especially because it's sort of related to um, a bag I recently talked about, which is the um, 2020 uh, QuiltCon pattern, which I have here, which is um, Cloud Vines Patchwork. <laughs> and um, so the QuiltCon patterns, as most people know, are, are limited editions and they come in just a few styles and last year's 2019 sold out super fast and so this year and I always regretted not getting it and this year um, that was my driving factor in getting this I thought well let me at least try see it in person I'll order it see it in person and if I don't like it I can return it and this is a very nice pattern because it has that makes use of that traditional star motif that you see in a lot of quilts. It looks very much like a repurposed quilt top, as I said in my other video. Uh, the color is coming in great here. I, I, I want to do this video real quick before I run out because I finally got some decent light here. And it makes all the difference of the, how the colors come out and the accuracy. This is very accurate. Um, as you can see, it's just got this great teal. Uh, all over the place just just very pretty and I, I did like the fact that it made use of that traditional star shape this was the 2019 quilt con pattern called quilt floral and <laughs> of course you can see it's a very different palette um, and like I said, it's just kicking myself when it sold out super fast and I had just sort of been ignoring it. I mean, I was aware that it came out, but I, I just didn't uh, get interested in it right away until it was sold out. <laughs> so that's sort of like how I work, right? As soon as the pattern goes discontinued, then I'm obsessed with it. So it was kind of in that family of the way I think. <laughs> and... Uh, so, you know, I to actually get one is just, I'm, I'm so happy. I mean, I, I just, I feel like, I, I almost feel like I, I don't, I'm so pleased with this, I, I don't need to ever buy Vera again. What? Who said that? <laughs> um, almost. Because uh, you know that'll never happen. But I almost feel that way. Like, I, I could die happy now. <laughs> um, so, again, the color scheme, very different pastel lavenders and pinks and uh, some gray tones in there and even this darker color here which is not black but it's like a very dark uh, purple but a soft dark purple like a soft eggplant kind of color really lovely and it's piped with dark it's like black denim similar to this piped with denim not something I would have uh, like if I were doing a custom bag, which I did do a custom bag, people have seen my video on that, I, I wouldn't ever go for the denim, and I still probably wouldn't go for the denim piping, but I think it looks great on these quilt con bags. Just really like it. Um, so it's nice to see that in person, see how that works. I don't think I'll ever be doing another custom bag in the near future because they just raised their prices by about $30, I think, um, for the bag that I got. So I'm glad I got it in there right when I did because it was already kind of expensive. Um, so it's out of my price range for, you know, till I hit the lock jackpot. <laughs> That's why I'm going to go get my big honking Mercedes and I'm going to buy all the Vera I want. <laughs> um, oh, and I'm going to move to a house that has a separate room for my Vera. <laughs> Um, okay, so just to show this up close a little bit, there's a lot of visual interest in this pattern, and that's, I think, part of why I like it so much, um, which is, you know, different from what you get here. Here you just get a few, uh, uh, the pattern swatches are more um, simplistic. I don't mean that in a bad way, but, you know, very it's a traditional, dainty, 
repetitive floral elements like you would see in a quilt, um, oftentimes in a quilt. And I don't have any problem with that because you want the star motif to read. And in order to get that to happen, you need to limit your fabric choices. And so I think it, you know, it's well done. This is well designed to mimic, you know, what a quilt would look like. Certain quilts anyway, more traditional quilt. I live very close to an Amish, you know, area, so I, I, there's quilts all over the place here. Um, but this, which is more just like a bunch of different fabric swatches sort of plunk down together, smushed down together. Um, this, this, the visual interest here comes from the variety in each of the swatches, especially you get these swatches that look like they're sort of harking back to the trim that Vera used to use, you know, traditionally in their designs. So like this, this vertical strip here really does remind me of trim. And then over here, you get this strip and this strip below, these two other different, they're all different, right, air, strips that are reminiscent of the trim. And so I like that sort of harking back to the history of, of Vera. I don't know if this is the first quilt con pattern. I mean, I don't know. This is the first one I was ever aware of, so I don't know what happened before 2019. Um, but if this was the first quilt con pattern, that's nice making reference to the trim. And I could see why they would do that. But then you just get all these other great swatches of fabric. You know, you've got this one here, a lot going on in it, like that true like lavender background. Then you have this very similar, but the background color, I mean, it's a different pattern going on in there, but um, a similar look. I think it's a different pattern going on in there. Um, but the background is sort of more of a grayish lavender, whereas this is more of a purple lavender. It's like that variety. And then you got this piece here with this sort of triangular element. And that kind of reminds me of um, Regal Rosette. This is sort of a, a recent purple pattern. I don't have anything in that to show to compare to see how similar it is, but it just is reminiscent of that treatment to me. And it also has, um, this is a nice background color, this sort of very pale mauve kind of color, very feminine, delicate. The color palette here is very delicate. And then there's this, which I'm glad is on the back because this is probably the least interesting motif. But again, that very pretty lavender color. And this is the lining similar to the lining. I think in the lining, the shapes, it's a little bit bigger, like, like it's been enlarged a little bit. But I'll show the lining. So I also thought the balance was nice, the, pat, the placement here, because I got a section of fabric. <laughs> yes, it's a big bag. It's like 16 across the zipper top, and it's about 14 top to bottom, you know. I won't go into all the details because I have talked about this bag a lot lately, but it's got you know, basically just your, your slip pocket and your zipper pocket on top of that on the outside. It has your soft plastic zipper up top and it has your hidden slip pocket next to that top zipper, which is nice. But I feel like I got a nice section of fabric well positioned because it's balanced with these, these two on the sides, panels, you know, balancing each, each other out nicely. And even the strap here on the front is a nice section of fabric so that it's not really adding any sort of busyness. You know, the back uh, strap is not cut from quite as great a piece. You, know, you can see it's sort of cut from a section where you're getting two bits of different pattern next to each other. Where the patterns change, that's the strip that was cut. And so these straps look a little bit busier. I think it still looks great. I mean, <laughs> you got this this fabric here, which ties into this, you know, so it moves your eye around the bag nicely. Just like in a painting, you know, when you're, when you're studying painting, you learn how to use color and to have 
use it in more than one, if you're using a color, use it in more than one spot in the composition so that it moves, it's pleasing for balance, but it also moves the eye around the composition well. And so that's kind of what I feel like what's happening here with these pieces of fabric. This one, the ones on both sides, and then there's one that's sort of on the bottom. So your eye moves around to find those because they're darker, you know. So I just think it's so so beautiful, really, just such a gorgeous pattern. I can't stop looking at it, you know. I guess I just want to keep it out so I can look at it all the time. <laughs> anyway, I'll just put on real quick. Hopefully the light won't blow out too much. And so I... <laughs> Oh, pardon the mess. Pardon the, the constant mess here. <laughs> um, I'm about 5'4". I am 5'4", but I'm about 130 pounds. I might be just a little bit more than that right now. It, you can see, so you can see, you know, how it is in proportion to the body. It's big. Sticks out, you know, sticks out. Now here you can sort of see what I'm talking about, you know, with the these three patches sort of balancing and moving your eye around. I wonder if this is affecting the light, the light from the closet. Yeah. Oh yeah, that looks much brighter now. Okay. So that's good. Just so pretty. Oh, no, too dark. <laughs> Sorry about that. Try to get back into the light. Okay. So that was it. I'm gonna. I do have to run out now, uh, real quick, to the store, and I'm gonna take this bag. Oh, I'll just show real quick if I can what I get here, so you can see the lining before I forget. So you can see I I, I do have a lot in here, and this is stuff I would typically take. I'm gonna run an errand, and I need some. Packable totes, one I'm going to be using, but this is another packable tote. Oh. What is the name of this pattern? I love this pattern. Maybe scattered super bloom, I'm not sure. Love this pattern. I do have I do do a video on these packable totes in this pattern. People who want to look around the um, my playlists they can find it. I'm not sure where it is. I did it a while ago. Um and I do like those packable totes. I use them, and they're not that—they're not that hard to fold up. Uh, and then I get my sweatshirt, something I always carry, especially in a bag like that, like this. That's why I like this bag so much, because it enables me to just throw a sweatshirt or a really big scarf or a hat to in there. It's great. And so then I got. My Carson cell phone crossbody that I use just to give my phone some protection. I don't ever wear it as a crossbody. I think it's sort of oddly shaped for that. Um, Audrey Wallet, which um, I'm using right now. It's working out pretty well. Uh, what I do like about this wallet is that um, it has a lot of card slots. Which I do, I do talk about this in another video, but it also has space in here, and my phone can fit right in there, and that's what I love about this. And I did just use this the other night when I went to a restaurant. I didn't want to take a bag, um, and I just oops, I just used this as a clutch and put my phone in it, um, and it worked really super well. And then I just get my Vera receipt. <laughs> I might need that. I don't remember where this came out of. Okay. So there's that. And then I have my iPad mini, but you know, my regular big iPad in a, a, a tablet sleeve fits in here. My laptop in a sleeve, laptop sleeve fits in here. They fit in here together. I mean, you can get a lot in this bag. And the bag is sturdy. I mean, I never feel like it's flimsy or like I'm going to have trouble because I'm putting too much weight in it. Never have that problem. And the bottom, people have asked me this, the base, you know, it is a soft, non-removable base. It seems to hold up pretty well. It doesn't seem to sag when I have the 
bag loaded up heavy. It doesn't sag. And I have washed, I did wash this. I wash everything that I don't get from a, directly from like a retail store, I wash, even if it's a new item. I have my GPS pouch and my charger cord pouch in there. So that was all in there. Um, so I, I did wash this. Oh, and my, my photos in various ID cases and some tissues tissues in a slip pocket. I did wash this uh, cold, delicate cy uh, cycle. I use um, all detergent pods with the odor lifter variety. Um, and I usually do a, well it's probably about a half a cup of white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, but I forgot to do it with this and it was fine, but I, I usually do do that as well. Um, here's the lining. Let's see the lining. Oh, and then I just let it air dry. Obviously, this is cotton. I'm not going to throw it in the dryer. And depending on the bag, um, sometimes I'll wrap some towels, big towels, in a plastic bag, and I'll s shove it in the bag to help give it a nice shape as it's drying, and I did that here. And then as it gets relatively dry, but it isn't all the way dry, I'll take that stuffing out just to speed up the drying process, because at that point, the bag will hold its shape well. And it really works nicely. It gives the bag a nice shape and it, it trains the bag. And works out any creases or kinks or folds or whatever. You can see the lining there. <laughs> Just a, a sort of subdued, repetitive pattern. Good lining fabric. Again, that very pretty classic, you know, like classic, perfect lavender color. So, I was getting the nod. <laughs> um, and this was made in the USA, as was, as was this. Seems like the quilt con bags are made in the USA. So it has, I mean, it doesn't feel too, it's not like it's so different from the regular um, Euro totes that you would buy. Um, ready-made or whatever, but it does almost feel a little bit more like my custom tote. There's something about it. I'm not sure what it is, whether it's that the lining fabric feels a little heavier or just something feels a little different. And I do know that custom bags are made in the USA too. Um, but anyway, so that was it. Just quick. I'm going to run out now. <laughs> I did want to show my my really one of my major Vera unicorns because I, I never thought I would find this and so uh, thank you Denise <laughs> she reached out to me and she knew I was interested in quilt the quilt con bags and uh, she had one to sell which is very rare like I, I you know I would always go on um, resale sites eBay uh, Poshmark always looking for this never came up nobody was selling this thing nobody um, I had another uh, Vera fan friend who's in um, the online focus group that I'm in for Vera Bradley, and she's got lucky enough to be going to the annual outlet sale. And she offered to look for it for me there because she's looking, also looking for it for herself. And uh, I went back and forth on whether I should take her up on that offer, um, impose on her to do that for me. <laughs> but then this, you know, I came upon this one, so you're off the hook, Corey, but thank you. <laughs> um, and I thought, I, I better I better jump at this one because who knows if it's going to be at the annual outlet sale. I mean, you know, this, this sold out so quickly when it first was offered. Um, the other, the, the, this year's pattern is not selling out in the same way as this one did. But anyway, that was it, my, my unicorn, Vera Bradley. 2019 quilt con pattern quilt floral <laughs> and just so in love with uh, thanks so much for watching and hopefully see you next time on Vera Bradley bag of the day <laughs> oh, unwieldy <laughs>